What's up guys? I know it's been a long time since I've put out a video. I've been on the road moving from Washington to Alabama and it took a little bit longer than I thought it would but I finally found some time to put out another video today. So today we're going to cover a watch that I've already done a video on. It was really just a first impressions but this is the Seiko SRPB51 also known as the Samurai. Now if you haven't seen the first impressions, you can go ahead and check that out. But uh, today I think I've got a much more informed opinion based on owning this watch for around two months now. So let's go ahead and get started with our first talking point, which is going to be price. On the Seiko website, MSRP is $525. Fortunately, MSRP is never what you're actually paying. So just a quick Google search, the first prices that come up are $309, $339, and $333. So that's about what you should reasonably expect to pay, you know, mid 300s. But if you do some research, you can easily find this, you know, within, uh, you know, 250, and then maybe even some places up to mid 400s. But I think mid 300s is the most realistic price that you're gonna find. Uh, next talking point is a 360 degree view and then dimensions. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the so watch. Here's the front, the side, the other side. I really do like this knurled texturing here on the bezel. There's the case back and then the clasp here. Nothing too special about this clasp considering the price point, but We'll talk about that later. And then the bracelet. For dimensions, we're looking at about 44 millimeters for the case diameter without the crown. With the crown, it goes up to about 47.8 millimeters. And then for thickness, about 13 millimeters thick. And then a lug to lug of 48.7 millimeters. And then a band width of 22 millimeters so this is definitely not a small watch i think that if you had to describe this in a word or a phrase i could say power move you know it, it definitely does make a statement on your wrist it does have solid wrist presence Next talking point is going to be features and there is a long list that you can see on the Seiko website. I'm just going to go over the main ones. Starting off, this is an automatic ISO certified dive watch. Um, it is a hacking watch, which I never understood the big deal of whether or not your automatic watch was hacking or not. Some people really take that seriously. To me, you know, it's a nice feature. I don't really care though. Because I'm still going to be able to set the time whether or not it's hacking or not. You know, maybe it's just not to the exact second. Which for me, it doesn't really matter because I set my watches a minute fast anyways. So that way, you know, I, I'm never late because I hate being late. Um, you got a 41 hour power reserve. So that means that you can hand wind it. So basically you just unscrew the crown. And then you feel it release from the case. And then... You can go ahead and wind it. Uh, what else we got? A uh, one-way or a unidirectional bezel, 120-click bezel. And the Seiko 120-click bezels are very smooth and I would say tight, so very accurate. There's not really much play. I mean, there, you know, there's a little play, but uh, I'll be hard-pressed to find any watch that doesn't have just a little bit of play. I will say I think Citizen does it a little bit better with their 60 click bezel, but that's just my personal preference. Um, got, it's got 23 jewels, and let's see what else we got here. Uh, oh yeah, water resistance up to 200 meters or 660 feet, and it's got the 4R35 caliber, which is a little bit higher than their lower end calibers, so I would say mid-range Seiko caliber, very reliable. Uh, I'm very happy with it. All right, now I want to go over the indices or the hour markers. These are applied indices. So what that means is that they are not painted on. They are 
applied. So like they're separate pieces that are glued on and um, that's always higher quality in my opinion. And I think everyone in the watch collecting business or, um, you know, watch enthusiasts will agree with me that applied indices are king because it really gives the dial such a better look. It gives it that dynamic look and you know, in different angles, you can see that the dial is alive. So that's always a great thing. So if you ever wonder about your watch or you're trying to decide, you know, if you want the watch, applied indices is always something to consider because it makes it look so fantastic. All right, now let's cover the hands. So the hour, minute, and second hand. Now, I want to say that the second hand is where the nickname Samurai comes from. Um, I guess a lot of people thought that that blade-shaped minute hand was reminiscent of a samurai sword. This is where I disagree. To me, it looks nothing like a samurai sword, it, you know, nowhere near the shape of a katana. Granted, I'm no professional in Japanese swords, but to me, it looks more like a broadsword. So. If it were up to me, which it isn't, I would have probably called this maybe like the Seiko Camelot, you know, something like the Knights of Camelot, because it looks more like a European blade shape to me. But, uh, you know, I could be wrong Com coming out of left field here. Let me know in the comments if you completely disagree with me or if you agree with me. Either way, it is fantastic. I like how it doesn't overplay its welcome it's just large enough to where it's easy to see and it's just long enough to where it points directly to the indice or the minute markers on the chapter ring and then the hour hand i don't know to me it kind of looks like um what's that character's name in space balls it's like big head like darth head something like that it kind of looks like his helmet so it kind of makes me chuckle but still fantastic hour hand you know i've got no complaints there and the second hand, one thing that I do like is that the Lumabrite pa is painted on the actual side that the second hand is pointing to. Normally you'll see, you know, like the other side of the second hand being painted with the loom. Um, not a big deal, but just for me, you know, I, I like that. So at night I know that this is pointing to the actual second that it's pointing to and not 180 degrees on the other side. A little bit interesting design function here with that red, I guess like, you know, the halfway point, it's all red after that. Uh, you know, no complaints there either. I do like how it all ties together on the overall look. Now I want to go over the chapter ring. So here's just a close up view of the chapter ring. Basically the um, outer edge of the dial where you see the minute markers. Nothing crazy here, pretty self-explanatory, you know, nothing to write home about, but it works very well. So I'm not going to knock it or give it praise, it's, it does what it's supposed to do. And it's just a close-up view of it so you can take a look at it for yourself. And now let's take a look at the dial, so the, the background basically. Um, you can't really see it that well, and I will bring it closer to the camera, but it has this grid design. There we go. There you can see it better here. And it makes it look so professional to me, in my opinion. Like, f to me, this watch is perfect for somebody who might be an engineer. Um, because, not that, you know, it, it would help an engineer at all. It just looks like something an engineer would wear because that grid, um, was it, dial, it looks like uh, some maybe some kind of, what's the word, uh, like graph paper that they would use to draw up a design or something. I, I just think it really ties in well with that lifestyle. But again, just 10 out of 10, fantastic. Very professional, very industrial too. So maybe that's why I like it. Now I want to talk about the case and case back. Um, if you remember the dimensions, we were looking at 13 millimeters case thickness. And to me, I think that's just a great 
number 13 millimeters where it's not too slim to where it's super delicate and i mean you know for some people they prefer a slimmer watch but for me i'm you know 250 pounds on a good day normally i'm 260 so you know i'm not some skinny twig so i need a watch a fat watch for my fat body <laughs> if that makes sense to you but let's go ahead and see what it looks like on the wrist I know a lot of you are out for blood if you don't see a wrist shot. So there you go. And on my fat wrist, this watch has a lot of presence still. So it's not super large, but it's just large enough to where it still looks elegant and maintains that very manly macho look. And I mean, if you want to compare, like to me, this... You know, I love the Citizen Ecozilla, but I cannot lie to you, like this is almost bordering ridiculous, just how thick and large this watch is. Whereas this one is kind of like that, it's the um, Goldilocks size, it's just right. And one thing that I do like about it is it kind of flares outward, right? Almost like a cone. And it's just a unique design, but I do like it. And one thing that I absolutely love is that knurling on the bezel, that texturing on the bezel. It To me, that is the selling point. Like, if you're going to get this watch for any reason, it should be because of this design. Because the rest of the watch itself, it's just a regular analog watch. And you might disagree with me, but my personal opinion is that there's really nothing special if you're just looking at it you know, in the pictures, just top down. To me, like, why would I buy this watch? I've got plenty of other analog watches. But when you tilt it at an angle and you see that knurled bezel, it really just changes it night and day. It makes it look like a precision tool straight out of a factory. And it, it's just a wonderful thing. So there you go. And for the case back, I really do like how they kept a solid screw down case back on this one and not like the typical see-through case backs. I do like see-through case backs, but to me it makes the watch look a little bit too delicate. The thing I like about this is it's almost as if the watch is saying, I don't care if you can't see what's inside of me, I know that I work good. And, and that's just the feelings that um, I feel with this design. Plus that Prospex Wave design, you know, you can't go wrong with that. It's always such a cool thing to have. Going on to the bracelet, the thing that I very much like about it is its simplistic design. There's really not much that you can improve upon. It's very minimalistic design, so it's hard to get wrong. And it's solid links, and you cannot go wrong with solid links. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, if you look at the budget-friendly Casios, they have these folded steel links, which there's nothing wrong with them, but no matter what, they are cheap, and they look cheap, and they feel cheap. These ones do not. They're solid pieces of metal, and you really can't ever go wrong with that. Keep in mind, when you're adjusting this watch, if you do adjustments yourself, this one, I can't remember, but I want to say that it's got the pin and collar system which means that the tension that keeps the pin inside the, the links is provided by a collar, which is like this little tiny um, sleeve, if you want to call it. So when you push out the pin, um, let's see if I can show you. So here, you see those, let's see if, you can, if I can show you that, it's kind of hard. Right, oh yeah, right there. So see these arrows? When you push out the pin in the direction of the arrows, you want to make sure to look for a little tiny metal collar that's also going to fall out. Because if you lose that, then when you put the pin back in, there is no tension holding that pin inside the link. So the, the pin is just going to fall out again. So keep that in mind. If you've never adjusted a pin and collar bracelet, just do some research, learn how to do it. It's very easy once you know how to do it. But for me, the first time I ever did it, I had no idea what the hell I was doing. I didn't even know that the bracelet had a pin and collar system. So I lost the collar and I put the watch back together and the links just fell apart the second I, I moved my wrist. So that's always a pain in the ass. But uh, 
Yeah, other than that, no issues with the bracelet. The clasp is the stamped steel clasp, which is there's nothing wrong with that, but I would have preferred something a little bit um, higher quality. But again, at this price point, you either get it, you know, you either get something that's higher quality or you just get this stamped steel one. It's it's hit and miss, but it works perfectly fine. And before I forget, this watch also has a bracelet extender right here. If I can pop that out for you. There, so it extends. And I want to say that this is for divers because this is a dive watch. So it extends it just enough for you to put this over your wetsuit if you are wearing this for, you know, diving because your wetsuit is going to make your wrist a little bit thicker, so that compensates for that. I think that's a very cool feature. I've only ever seen that on the Tuna, the Seiko Tuna, which is substantially more expensive. So the fact that you get a watch like the Samurai, which is a lot more budget friendly with the same feature, I think that's a, a great thing as well. So that's really all I got to say about the Seiko Samurai. My overall thoughts, I mean, you already knew that I was absolutely going to love this watch. Not much that I would change on it. It is its own unique watch, so I'm not going to compare it to any other one. You know, to me, I think that this one has deserved its place in the history of watch collecting. Um, it really is an iconic timepiece that I think anyone should have in their collection. And even if you're not a collector and you're just looking for a watch, if you're a one watch guy, you can't go wrong with the Seiko Samurai. Um, the Loom is fantastic. You know, if you've never experienced Seiko Lumabrite, then you are in for a treat because it's super strong and it lasts all night long. You know, obviously the glow is not going to be super bright you know, after half an hour, but it it is, um, what's the word? It, it just, it's long lasting. So, you know, several hours will go by, you'll wake up in the middle of the night and it'll still have a very pleasant glow and, and you really can't go wrong with that. And again, that knurling on the bezel, beautiful. So cool. Um, I think actually my Ecozilla has that too. Yep, it does. And that is another reason why I love this one as well. I mean, sometimes I will find myself just sitting and just admiring that because it looks so cool. But before I start rambling and make this video too long, let's go ahead and end it now. Um, I hope that this helps you with your next watch purchase. Thank you for watching and make sure to tune in for my next episode. All right, bye.